Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another Capture One tutorial. Uh, today I want to talk about the session, the directories that it creates, the files it puts inside of each of those, some strategies for backing up, and then also what files you could delete if you're running out of hard drive space or need to conserve uh, space on external drives or cloud storage. So uh, to get started, we're going to use this session with Jennifer here. I've shot her many different times and you've seen her face in numerous uh, tutorials. I will put a link to her Instagram down below if you'd like to follow her. I'm sure she would greatly appreciate it. So the four folders as we've discussed in the past are the capture, select, output, and trash folders. Uh, so to look at one of these on a hard drive, we just simply right click on it and choose show in Explorer. And here are the files in the capture folder. So we can see all of my Sony RAW here. And if we change to other directories in there, like the selects folder, for example, you see there's also RAWs. Remember that capture one physically moves a file when you select it. It doesn't create a virtual copy kind of like Lightroom does. It actually physically moves the file. Um, I like that aspect of this uh, from a perspective of backing things up. And then I know things in the select folder are worth a lot more to me than the things in the capture folder. Uh, because I think the capture folder contains near misses where the selects folder are the best of that session. And obviously the output folder contains the retouched images. Uh, these are the Photoshop TIFFs or PSD documents. I prefer a TIFF document, but you know, you do you. Uh, so those are the most important ones to me. So as I back things up, I always find that the capture folder is my least important one, assuming I've called the entire shoot, meaning I've gone through, moved the ones I liked to the select folder and so on. So to do that in capture one, you simply highlight the images you would like to move and click this button here and that will move the variant to the selected folders. Very simple. Uh, and you can see that when we're looking at this session, there isn't a lot to it. Uh, we have four directories and we have this thing, the session database. Now, unlike Lightroom, the session database does not contain changes to the image. It simply contains the images, some references to them, uh, proxies where it keeps the thumbnails, uh, where it's keeping the files that actually talk about the changes that you have made uh, using the Capture One editor, if you're doing any retouching in Capture One. So unlike Lightroom, this file is not as important to uh, the scheme of things. What is important is inside of the capture folder where we see all our RAWs is another capture one folder. So in here, you'll see two different things. You'll see the cache and the settings 130. This is the same for all capture one uh, folders or folders that capture one is scanning. Remember capture one works kind of like bridge and that is simply viewing these folders. It isn't doing anything special with them. So you can actually look at any folder you would like to on your hard drive using Capture One, and it will create a Capture One folder uh, for cache and settings. So what's in these and why do we care? Inside cache, you'll see proxies and thumbnails. Now, this is what makes Capture One so fast, is the proxies and the thumbnails are simply previews of what the uh, files are being viewed. So you're not actually reading the raw file every time Capture One loads you're looking at the proxies on the thumbnail. Thumbnails are in here and they're by the global unique identifier, which is also in that database. And it's got a COT uh, extension. So that's capture one thumbnail. These, as well as everything in the proxies directory are discard eligible. Meaning if you're running out of hard drive space and you really need to trash something, everything inside this cache folder can be deleted. And the next time you load capture one, or Capture One sees that directory and is asked to kind of load it, um, it will recreate everything in the cache folder as needed. Now, there are some important considerations here. If you're using Capture One and your machine is a bit slow, you can actually go into your settings, go to image, and at the top here is the preview size. Now, I set this to the size of my monitor, but realistically, the window that I would preview things inside of Capture One does not use this side here and it doesn't use the top. So I could actually drop this down to 1680, for example. That will make my uh, thumbnails smaller. The proxies will load faster and Capture One will seem to be a bit speedier. Now, when you do your editing and you zoom in, obviously Capture One is handling uh, those files in a real time situation, but in general, it will make Capture One perform better. But that's up to you. If you have a very beefy machine, you may choose to keep that setting uh, at the defaults, but I really don't see the benefit for doing so. So back inside of this folder here, uh, as I said, if you wanted to, you could delete this cache folder and it would be recreated every time. When I'm doing my backups, 
I make sure I exclude the cache folder. Um, there's no reason for me to move this to external hard drives, to my mirrored hard drives or RAID arrays, and especially pushing them up to the cloud. This is not useful. And you can see this one is 435 megabytes. So it is not a tiny selection of images or files. Uh, it's something we don't wanna have to, to haul around forever. Now the settings 130, you can see here, uh, is creating these settings, Capture One settings. This is where Capture One stores all of the modifications you've made to a file, meaning you've maybe darkened it, lightened it, uh, added some clarity, made some selections, other things along that lines, these are all here and they're stored with the same name as the file. This is why Capture One is a little bit smarter than Lightroom when it comes to the danger of deleting the database. Capture One understands that this is where those settings are always stored. So again, if your database file gets deleted inside of Capture One, it's gonna find these settings and it's gonna restore all those connections. Now, if you're worried about these getting deleted accidentally or not being backed up, uh, there is a solution and it's kind of an elegant one. And that is if you right click on an individual image, you can say pack as EIP. And this is kind of a cool thing. So let me do this with actually a selected image here. Um, so this is one of the ones that I actually care about. And uh, let's look at it from the hard drive's perspective at the same time. We're gonna go to selects. So if I go here and I pack as EIP, what this is gonna do is it's gonna change the extension to EIP. Why do we care about that? Well, what's cool is you'll notice now it lists inside of the selects as EIP, right? As you, as you would expect. If we go, now note here the number is 0708. We go into Capture One, Settings. You'll notice the 0708 is now missing from the Capture One settings. And this is interesting because what it has done is it has packed all of it together into one file. So this EIP file contains all the changes you've made and the original raw file, all packed into a single file. This means that if you use an editing service or uh, someone say overseas or a friend who does your editing, you can actually just send them this EIP file and they can edit it in Capture One, they can unpack it in Capture One, uh, they can do all those different things that they choose to do with it. As long as they send it back to you as an EIP file, you'll have all those changes. And you can just leave it like this on your hard drive. There's nothing wrong with this. And this makes it so that you don't have to worry about separating those or blowing those away accidentally. So you're probably saying to yourself, what am I gonna do if Capture One goes out of business someday and I have this proprietary format like the DNG format that Adobe is kicking out? The nice thing is that this is actually a standard format for compression. So if I use 7-zip here, for example, which is an archive tool, uh, and I open the archive, you'll see that it's capture has a Capture One folder inside of it with the COS file, that critical file that's in there. It's all in there with the raw file, and then some XML documents for how Capture One is keeping track of other things that are going on. We can actually work this way by default if we would like Capture One to do so, and that's going into Edit, Preferences, go to Image, and right here, Pack as EIP when importing, and Pack as EIP when capturing. If you're not shooting tethered, then don't worry about this one, but if you're using it like just Lightroom is, then you would use Pack EIP when importing and then it will always stay as an EIP. If you're using a catalog, do not do this. Catalogs and EIP don't work very well together. That's not really how catalogs are designed to work. Now, if you're a person that's doing a lot of changes in Capture One to your images, and you wanna make sure you keep those settings, you may pack it as EIP so you're sure that you're backing up everything in one file and not have to worry about backing up all the settings 130 folders that also contain those changes. So this is a pretty cool way to kind of keep track of what's going on in Capture One. Now, obviously the trash folder, we're gonna just lose that at some point. But remember that your biggest uh, gold mine of images is always your output folder. If you're doing it like I am, you're keeping all your Photoshop and TIFF documents in there. That means that this gets pushed up to the cloud, it gets moved around to all of my different drives and is uh, backed up onto archive hard drives. Now, if I decide to do a lot of post work to these inside of Capture One, I need to make sure that I back up those settings files as well, because if I've color graded this TIFF, I need to make sure that backup is including those settings files. So uh, remember that inside here. Now, if you are doing modifications to your TIFF documents and Photoshop documents in Capture One after you've already done your editing, like you're doing color grading and other things. So hope 
this was helpful. I know that when I first started out with Capture One, I just kind of backed up everything and I ended up backing up this cache file so many times and it cost me a lot of hard drive space over t over the years. So hey, that pretty much concludes this video. Uh, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. And uh, let me know if you have any additional questions and I'll post another video uh, to try and do a follow-up. But I thought this was an important one for those of you who are using sessions but may not understand all the bits and pieces and how they move together. Uh, so take care and I'll catch you next time.